Hello guys and welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to look at my new Elmagrav which is an engraving machine. So I did show this very briefly in one of my previous blethers when it turned up in the workshop which was way back in probably October November time last year something like that and largely it sat on top of my chest of drawers in the workshop since then and done absolutely nothing so now is the time to attack it so I've got quite a bit of work to do to this as you'll see in a moment we'll come in and have a bit of a look at it but largely most of that is superficial so a little bit about the machine so it's a German machine it comes from roughly around about the 1970s 1980s best I can figure out there were several versions of this so it's quite hard to pin a date on it um, it's an incredibly rare machine there's not many of these about anymore the, you know you don't tend to see it's the first time I'd ever come across them I think the company Elmer is still in business uh, but they, they now specialize in modern day engraving machines which are laser sort of laser burners that kind of thing and I think they do a lot of ultrasonic tanks and things like that for cleaning so that's, that seems to be where they've gone with their business but they're still in business today so I do have a manual for this machine it was all in German and a couple of my subscribers have very kindly contributed to uh, some effort to translate that into English. I've yet to fully read that cover to cover. I've read a lot of it but I have a bit more to read and I need to study the diagrams of the machine breakdown which is going to help me a little bit with the strip down and the rebuild hopefully. Um, as I've said, um, I think I've covered most of the points there on the board. I think other than that, just incredibly well engineered. And you know, this is, these are really, really well engineered bits of kit. Why have I got it? I think I've covered this in my blether video, but just the compact size of it. You know, I, I want some engraving capability, some manual engraving capability. I'm not, don't want to get into CNC stuff. That's not what this workshop's about. This workshop's about winding handles and pulling levers, and that's what I get enjoyment out of. So I wanted to go back to manual machining and engraving, but I wanted something that was a bit smaller and a bit more portable than that great big Taylor Hobson pantograph engraver that I've got that just takes up far too much space. And as you'll see very shortly, this is incredibly compact. Can sit in most places in the workshop easy to transport around as well when we do move the workshop and as I say it takes no floor space up so they were all the benefits of this so without any more babbling we'll bring you in we'll have a quick look over it and then we're going to start taking it to bits so have a good look at it before we start because that might be the last time you see it in one bit we'll catch you all in a minute so we're in at the engraver we've got it up on the bench which just that, saying that alone is one of the reasons that I've bought this. It's very compact, very well made, very poorly cared for, I think would be how I would sum it up. So it needs quite some work, but largely, and from what I've read so far, how it works, you put your copy in these two plates at the bottom, which aren't attached, and the there's some odd bits and bobs of screws but they all need replacing to attach these properly down to this base unit. You slide your brass copy into here and then you use this stylus which I can't show you while they're on at the moment because it, it's all kind of rusted up and corroded the, the adjustability of that so I don't want to force anything so basically you can see what happens as I move that stylus around you can see how the table moves a very clever way that this works and then there is some adjustment on the front here for your reduction factor so from your original copy or your pattern or whatever you put on this bottom face you've then got a reduction factor that you can alter here which will then alter the amount of movement on the table surface at the top which means that controls the size of your engraver, your actual engraving. So that's largely how it works. There's some X and Y positioning on the table to get positioned where you need to be. Electric motor, there's some adjustments on the back that I don't fully understand yet that I need to do some work on. I try and understand how all that works. Obviously electric motor, spindle, collet chuck with a 
an engraving bit in it, work lamp with the broken bulb in it, and then at the back here you've got a almost a rack and pinion affair where you can you know lift the head up, you can move the head round to different positions to position it, so very versatile. And then obviously same same deal with the table. That's also on a rack and pinion, so we can lift the whole table up and down as well. And yeah, so quite versatile in terms of positioning. I've got it plugged in at the minute, and I shouldn't really be doing this because the wires are of an unknown state. They're pretty pretty grubby looking. That I've to have had a quick check of them, but yeah, that there I'm going to replace them. But I, I'm very wary of somebody else's electrical wiring but just to test it so it works makes noises and the spindle goes round so that's a good start not sure whether that it sound should sound like that but it doesn't sound particularly too bad there is a bit of vibration from it but then this motor you can see is not there's some grub screws that hold that in place so none of this is tight so yeah lots of work to do I think we'll turn the power off to that now make it safe so yeah um, that's roughly the principle of it now you can see the state of the rust here on this bottom table is pretty bad the state of the rust on the actual table surface itself is pretty bad it's had a douse in the WD when it first came in the workshop the state of the column at the back is quite rusty so there's, yeah, there's a lot of rust on this. I think it's been set outside at some point. And then what I have found with this is, and no use to me at the moment, but you can flip this front section out and you can actually take your spindle cartridge out. And I would imagine this is for, you know, rather than forever changing the stylus, the actual engraving bit, in a production environment where you're doing lots of different things you just insert a new whole spindle cartridge I'm guessing that will be the reason that's been made like that so yeah that all fits together I'm not going to bother putting it back in because it's all coming apart anyway so yeah that very quick release spindle mechanism on the front and then the final thing to say about the way it operates there's this lever at the back here and in between your lettering when you need to move from one letter to the next you basically lift your head and, and cutter out of the workpiece by just pulling this lever towards you on a kind of a pivot mechanism at the back there so largely that's the operation under here this whole table surface there's about I don't know how many bearings there's lots of bearings under here and some round rails and the bearings all sit at angles and that's what gives this table its movement doesn't feel too bad doesn't sound too bad largely if this has been set out in the rain because of the shape of this not too much moisture will have got under there hopefully so uh, yet to see what that looks like when we strip it so i think that's a bit of an overview and what we'll do now is i'm going to get the tools out and we're going to start breaking it so I'll bring you back periodically and show you bits I've taken off it and you know, it's more for a catalogue for me really so I can refer to that when we come to reassembly but also hopefully a bit of interest for you guys as we go there's a few bits I need to remake you know these handles on the axes are all broken this one's bent slightly it's not doesn't feel right so yeah there, there is going to be some machining required to bring this back to a, a decent workable state but nothing too serious I don't think so I'll bring you back shortly when I've taken a few small bits and pieces off and I'll just keep bringing you back as we get deeper and deeper into it all right guys we're a few minutes in we've taken the the whole head unit off we just wound that straight off the rack interestingly the minute you wind the head off the rack actually just drops off there's nothing holding that in place at all other than the head itself it just sits in a the groove that's on here on the shaft at the back this piece sits into that groove and that obviously gives you the option to spin the head round so that's a floating rack 
So dead easy to take that off. We've taken the table off. We just basically wound the axis right off on the X axis. So I've got the X and Y table all in one piece. We took these four screws, undid these four screws here and just lifted this whole top plate off. So really stripped it down you know in a few minutes fairly quickly and you can see a little bit more how this moves now how this works so you can see these round bars with the bearings hopefully we'll zoom in a bit so you can see the round bars here for the X and Y axis and you can see these bearings that run all over the bars so this whole unit moves by those bearings rolling across the bar so quite an ingenious way it works really very clever and you've obviously got an articulating ball unit in the middle here that's attached to the stylus and then this piece here that I spoke about earlier as I drop that you can see the adjustment on the front the, the numbers changing and that now you can see for the same amount of movement now I've got a lot of movement of the table so that's your basically your adjustment for your scaling so very clever how it works there's even a mirror on this face here so that you can read your alignment off really well engineered and put together so I'll bring you back in a bit I'm gonna have a bit more of a look stare at this bit and see what the easiest way to take this off is without doing any damage and then we'll probably lift if we can I want to take this whole sub assembly off in one for now and just want to get down to the really the bare bone the bare bones of the base and the column at the back and then we'll take it from there so I'll bring you back in a bit Right guys, we've stripped everything down apart from the main column and the base. Well, when I say everything, we've got everything off the base apart from the column. Two grub screws which are well slacked off. There was a roll pin going through here. This is absolutely solid in here. I really want the two things apart so that I can put the column in the lathe to clean it up and put the... I don't know what we're going to do with this bottom bit, whether we skim it slightly on the mill I need to measure the t-slots to see whether I can get away with doing that or not to get rid of all the rust because it is really bad it's not going to come off with a, a light rub with some emery cloth so I'm just going to try applying a bit of heat to this casting round here and we'll give this a tap and see if that helps I'm not going to go nuts with it and if I can't get it out we'll have to manage without this is quite a weak casting and the ones that I have seen on YouTube this base casting is actually cracked in places under here on the ribs so I don't really want to be going too, too nuts with this so we're going to try a little bit of heat if that doesn't work we'll have to make do with it in one bit and resort to manual methods so I'll bring you back in a minute when we're just putting some heat on Got it. And 
and that's why we bought the oxypropane kit already earning its money so you can see the state of this top face it really is pretty ugly other than the bit where the two copy plates have been you know this I don't know we'll give it some manual cleaning and see whether we can see how much effort that's going to take actually it's probably not going to be too bad looking at that it looked and it looked and felt a lot deeper than what that actually is that's actually that's actually cleaning up okay I was thinking I was going to need to put this up on the milling machine and take a very light skin pass over this whole top surface but looking at that I mean that's just some fine scotch bright I think with something slightly more aggressive to start with just to make life a bit easier maybe even a wire I might try a wire a, a, a sort of brass wire brush to start with or something to get the worst off there's blobs of paint and stuff on it look where somebody's obviously spilt paint and then at the back here there's two plastic bungs so on some of these machines the on off switches and the controls poke through this this back face so we'll take these plastic bungs out and we'll start attacking we're probably going to start with the base we get the base done first then we'll do the big column at the back that we've just taken out and we'll get those two bits put back together and then we'll just gradually start building the machine back up and each sub assembly as we go so you know if we spin to the right or the left sorry facing a different way to you you can see all the bits and pieces there in their full sub assemblies really there's not a lot to do to a lot of these there's a few bits and pieces but largely just clean up and then most of the work's going to be on the actual table itself where the ball bearing slideways are there's quite some cleanup required again it's nothing too serious it's just mainly grime and dirt but we'll give all that a good clean up and then we'll check all these bearings I've noticed that a lot of the bearings aren't actually in contact with the rails so we'll take all the bearings off probably one at a time and check them to see if they're good or bad and then replace and clean them and replace them if they're good if they're bad let's see if I can get some more ordered up of the same size bearing so yeah largely bit by bit we're just going to put this back together but you can see actually the quality of the slideway where the table sits is in it's in really good condition so not where well, mechanically pretty good it's just a bit dirty um, and a bit of setting required interestingly the all of the screws I don't know whether you've seen it before but all of the screws on this table piece here I've all got the the paint, yellow paint, dobs of paint on them and that would have been from initial assembly so it's quite clear to see this has never been taken apart since it was brand new because those dabs of paint are all intact apart from the obviously the ones that I've taken out to release this from the rest of the machine so I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me scrubbing and scrubbing away at this so I'm going to have a bit of a play with this and I'll bring you back either when I've tidied it up or part way through the process and show you what it looks like alright guys quick update that's where we've got to with the base so that's come up really well there's a bit of pitting you can see in the, in the surface but largely that's a hundred times better than it was when we started so quite happy with that and I've got about an hour into that to get that to that state so not too bad really worth the effort as I said wire wheel scotch bright that's all we've used and some WD-40 just to clean the rest of the paint work up and that's how it's going to stay you know there's chips and bits of paint missing it's a used machine it's going to stay in that state and the final thing to say is thirsty work so next we're going to move on to the pillar that goes in the back so I'll bring you back when we're cleaning that up alright guys next job is the column 
so it's a bit there's a bit of oil and there's some very light rust in places here and there so we're just going to drop that in the lathe nice and gently in the chuck and just basically use some scotch brite so we've got that very lightly gripped in the three jaw chuck so that we don't really mark it we've got half of it sticking out the front and half of it down inside the headstock I've reduced the speed to five, about 580 I think something like that sorry 540 I wouldn't want to go any faster than that with this much sticking out unsupported it's not going to go anywhere but just from a, a risk and vibration perspective that will be plenty fast enough for some scotch bright I've got my saddle right out of the way so there's no risk of me bumping my arm on something and hitting it I'm going to be pulling my sleeves up just because I don't want anything loose near a job like this the bracelet's coming off the watch is coming off and it might seem a little bit overkill but that took two seconds to do that and I'm now safe or as safe as I can be to do this manual operation with some scotch bright so what we're going to do is a little bit of WD-40 and then just gently work it So that's nearly nearly as good as it needs to be. There's a couple of little bits where it's a little bit black. I'm just going to give that another going over. Then we'll do probably up to about here and then we'll switch around, do the other end. So I'll bring you back when I've got that done. Alright guys, excuse all the noises. We've got dehumidifier running, heater running and I forget what else. So that's all the background noise. So apologies for that. We've got our column complete come up very nice and we've got that refitted back into the base we've attacked this next piece so I'm basically attacking them bit by bit in the way that I broke them down so this was the last bit to come off so obviously the first bit to go back on so we've cleaned all of that up almost ready to go back on there's one or two bits worth worthy of note and I've not filmed them as I've gone because this this will be a hugely long episode so this is the pinion gear that works with the rack and this shaft as I took this out was bent quite badly so we've with a couple of uh, accurate taps with a with a hammer and how I did that so that I didn't damage the threads was I held the shaft on the plain portion of the shaft and I put a nut onto the thread and I made sure I was hitting the nut and actually not the thread itself so we didn't cause any damage to the threads so yeah a couple of taps on that and we've got that pretty well straightened out and cleaned up this is the lock lever for this bottom portion to lock it in place once it's in the right position this was really badly rusted up it's not cleaned up particularly well but cleaned up good enough for what we're doing so that's done so we've got our last two or three bits to do so in this central portion here which I've cleaned all of this this sort of working piece up so that's all clean this is where the this central unit sits up through there and that's the basically the ball joint that the whole system works on so that just needs really a clean there's nothing too bad with that it's a little bit of corrosion at the bottom so nothing too much and then into the bottom of that piece goes this piece which is the stylus and you can see the bit that's been buried inside this piece is pretty good but the bit that's been hanging out the bottom which is the bit you actually grab hold of so it serves no function really the only functional part of this bottom piece is the point itself that goes in the letter sets the rest of it is just tactile and what you get hold of so we're going to give that a clean up in the lathe and then there's the handle that goes onto the end of 
this shaft that was bent and we've just got some nasty horrible green paint on there so we're just going to give that a bit of a clean up see if we can get rid of that green paint and largely at that point this first unit is ready to go back on the column so we've got all of our bits cleaned up for this bottom assembly and I'm just going to start reassembling now but interesting to note and I don't know whether this is from new manufacturer I'm guessing it is but this particular thread in here which is the clamp nut that holds this whole thing in the right place on the column against a, a key well it's not really a key it's more of a it's more of a gib strip that sits in this key here that bites up against the column a brass one that's actually teflon coated I thought it was just dirty but it's kind of brass with a best I can figure out some kind of teflon coating on so I've left that I've not made any attempt to clean that off I'm presuming that's to give you a a good sliding surface against the column so all we've done is clean the muck off that but anyway digressing going back to this thread it's actually helicoiled I don't know whether the camera's going to pick that up but I'm presuming that's done from new manufacture which you don't you know I've never come across that before on a new manufactured machine tool at least so anyway what we're going to do now is start putting the bits and pieces back together so we've got our straightened out pinion and shaft we're just going to drop that back in well I'm saying drop that back in I hope it's going to go in reasonably well I had to take it out with quite some force because it was bent and it didn't want to come out very well for obvious reasons so we're just going to give that some oil there on the shaft yeah it's certainly going back in a lot better than it came out so that's that's spinning quite nicely in there so that's good and then the bits that go on the back of that are there was a, a bevel washer that we've cleaned up a, a thick machined aluminium washer and our cleaned up hand wheel interesting to note I didn't realise until I started cleaning it up I think I know why the shaft was bent this has been knocked over at some point and you can see there it's broken some of that hand wheel away but so be it it will remain broken we're not going to do anything with that other than put it back together okay so we were struggling a bit there and largely because I took a an M8 nut off that was very rusty and because I've not cleaned that up because I intended to put a new one on I'd lost it in the batch of parts I'd got on here <laughs> so anyway we've got that in there now that creates the correct level of friction using the Belleville washer into this pinion so that now when I turn it and I don't know whether you can see it it will be turning the pinion gear to move it up and down the rack and as you can see now so before this was all wibbly wobbly it's now nice and straight in line with the axis of the pinion shaft so happy with that okay we've got the we've got that next bit done so all cleaned up and reassembled so a couple of things, helicoil thread was in this one as well which means that must be factory and also these two screws on the kind of the clamping bar that sits inside the keyway there exactly the same so I'm presuming that's factory as well what we've done is used some super fine scotch bright on these rails here just to clean them as best I can they feel very good I was gonna try getting some slip gauges and putting some slip gauges in between the bars just to see because these obviously need to be parallel for this to work properly but as you can see from the fixings we've got 
roll pins in each corner and a group and a screw cap screw that comes in from the other side to hold these down so there is no positioning of these these are fixed position so there's nothing I can do about them even if they're slightly out of parallel but I, w I will just double check them on final assembly when I'm starting to put the the running gear that goes on here I'm going to have a, just a double check just so that I can understand if there is any error I'll know that it's in these rails and not in the carriage that runs on them so we'll fit this back now it'll be out of sight for a minute while I drop it on the on the column and it should come into sight as I bring it down and hopefully Should fit together. So there we go, that's got our next, we'll just lock that up. Just give it a nip onto the chest so it can't move anywhere. So that's got our next piece of the jigsaw puzzle back together, all cleaned up, and I think we'll be calling that it for this first episode so pleased with that that's gone that's gone well so far so I'll just bring you back at the board and we'll close part one out so there we go guys that's the end of part one of the engraving machine nothing too exciting but hopefully it will give you a bit of an insight as to how this machine is put together and built very 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 well designed and built and also it's clear from the work that I've done, and you'll have seen that from the pictures, that this thing really hasn't, as most of the machines, done a great deal of work. It doesn't look like it's worn out or there's lots of damage. You know, once I've cleaned up all the dross and muck that's on it, actually, it's almost like brand new underneath. A few bits of pitting here and there from where the rust's got hold, but largely so far in areas that don't really matter too much. So, nothing too much to worry about. So, not sure there will obviously be a part two of this engraving machine sort of refurb I don't know when that will be it could be next week or it could be in a couple of weeks I'll just try and shuffle things around so that it doesn't become too too much samey um, so we'll see how we get on with that I'm just, I want to crack on with it actually so it, it could even be next week that we conclude that because at the minute my bench is covered in lots and lots of bits of machine that I just want to get the bench cleared so I can crack on with probably tearing the shape into bits and doing a similar sort of refer job on the on the shaper so anyway with all of that being said thank you all very much for watching thank you for subscribing thank you to the new subscribers that have come along and we will catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making or doing something else